Today is recipe binder reorganization day. I have my old recipe binders here. I have been loving them in general, but they've just gotten out of hand. If you have tried the recipe binder method before and feel a little bit overwhelmed by it, today I'm gonna to break down how I'm going to change up my strategy and get things ultra organized. I shared this on Instagram that I was going through this process and a lot of you asked questions wanted to see a behind the scenes and even get a template for what I'm doing. I shared a quick little picture and a lot of you really liked it. So I did go ahead and make a template. I am going to include that in the description box below if you're interested in like the exact same template that I created. Otherwise, let's just talk through recipe binders in general and what I think I'm gonna do to make this more organized and I'm gonna actually do it here with you and walk you through the process. So my old recipe binder, I had page dividers, little folder dividers with labels of each section. I had sheet protectors that I had my old magazine clippings pulled out. I also had favorite recipes that I had printed from online. Some family hand-me-down recipes that I like hand wrote in there or family members emailed me. Things like that were all in here. I have cookbooks that are separate still, which is something that I'll talk through a little bit later. But I was really just overwhelmed by it because it's a lot of recipes that I've maybe tried and loved. Those should be in the binder. My favorites should be in here. But there are also recipes that I tried and maybe didn't love, but still kept in here. And then there are recipes that I've never tried before. So what I'm trying to do is not only up the organization of this a little bit, but also to really try and go through and make these recipes and put only my absolute family favorites, one that everyone loves and says, yep, I would be excited if you made that again, not just like, eh, I'd eat it. I'm really, really trying to focus on those favorite, favorite recipes and keeping those in here. The other thing that I had done, I've gone through a couple iterations of recipe binders. I first started with just one binder and I quickly got overwhelmed by that. So I subcategorized my binders. You'll see the one that I have here is breakfast and I have a whole binder of breakfast recipes. And within breakfast recipes, I had you know, muffin recipes, waffle and pancake recipes, cakes and breads, egg dishes, rolls. Um, I had donuts and scones, uh, healthy breakfast ideas, smoothies, all of that stuff. So there were so many categories within each category that I wanted to divide it that way. When I had one big recipe binder, it was a little bit more difficult to find things. If you don't have as many recipes, I think you could easily do one recipe binder or you could break them down. I'm gonna stick with the broken down version and the template that I have caters to both types of people. I have cover pages if you wanted to just say recipes on the outside, or I have cover pages if you wanted to say breakfast on the outside or dessert or whatever the case might be and you want to subcategorize that way. So my strategy in building the new binder, enough talking about the old binder because that was not working, is like I said, having categories for each. So we have my breakfast one, and then I am labeling, you know, egg dishes here, and I then have all of my egg dish recipes. I haven't filled out a ton in here, but again, I have rolls, I actually do have a roll in here, muffins, waffles, pancakes, the same categories that I was talking about. But the reason that it is so scarce in here right now is because what I am doing is I'm taking my old recipes and I am working through them. And as I cook them at the end of every meal, I say, okay, does it go in the binder or does it not? I'm kind of like blindly trusting my family and seeing what they think about it. I also, of course, have opinions as well, but I want everyone to be on board and everyone to enjoy the recipe because I'm not gonna make a dish if I'm the only one eating it, even if I love it. If I truly, truly love something, I might save it for myself if it's something that I could make an individual portion of, but otherwise, out it goes. And I have been, probably like every week or two, I've been collecting a stack of the recipes from the old binder and just leaving them in a pile. And then once I get a nice little stack, then I am working on transferring them into my new recipe binder. And the way that I'm doing that is online. My template is online. It is through Canva. If you've never used Canva before, you can create a free account. It's actually very simple to use, especially because what I will be sending you, the link is a template. All you need to do is just type in the recipe. There is a space to type in 
the cook time, the prep time, the number of servings, all of your ingredients, as well as directions, the source, you know, where you got it from. And at the top, you will put the title of the recipe, but there's also a little space where you can drag and drop a photo. If you have a photo from an online recipe that you're going to copy over, drag and drop that photo. Or sometimes I just like Google an image and have something that looks similar to what I'm making. I get really visually inspired when I cook. If there's a recipe that's more complicated and you're supposed to twist something this way and fold it over and you have no idea what it's supposed to look like at the end, that can be kind of difficult. So I like having a photo and I think it's just pretty to do it that way. And I have both half sheet recipes and full sheet recipe cards. So if you have a longer recipe, you can use the full sheet, but otherwise, I think most recipes can fit on those half sheets, at least I'm finding that I can. And let's talk about the strategy of how I'm getting these papers into the digital version, which is option one or option two. I also have templates that are these recipe cards, but with blank lines. So if you don't want to go through Canva, you don't want to do it online, you can simply print it out and handwrite if you prefer that. I love a handwritten recipe binder. I think they're beautiful looking, especially if you want to pass it down from generation to generation. I think that would be lovely if you did that in handwriting. And I know some people are just handwriting people, or you could do a combination of the two. But when I have these recipes here, like my little stack, first I'll go through, and if it's something that I printed from online like this, I'm gonna find the recipe and I'm copying and pasting everything over. If it's from a magazine, sometimes you can still look it up and find the online version, copy and paste, but other times it does involve a little bit of transcribing and typing things over, which isn't the worst thing in the world because what I do is as I'm making these recipes and making my little stack here after a week or two is I am taking note of changes that I would make. If I feel like, ooh, that was too spicy, then I'm going to change the amount of whatever the heat source was. If I felt like it needed to cook longer, then I am going to reduce the cook time to what actually worked for me. I'm even cutting down on the text because sometimes I think there's a lot of fluff in recipes and my mind when I'm in the middle of cooking gets a little bit lost sometimes as I'm reading because there are so many words that I can break things down in step one, two, three, four, five, maybe in a different way than the recipe author did and cut down those words to simplify it to help the cooking process actually. So not only is this customized in an aesthetic way that I like it, but it's also customized in a functional way in terms of tweaking the recipes in a way that works for me and a cooking style that works for me. Just less words is a lot easier for me to manage. So what I'm starting to do right now is I have this buffalo chicken quinoa salad recipe that I have pulled up. I've started kind of copying and pasting it over as you can see. And I am going to even copy an image and paste it here. And you'll see I can just drag it and it grabs it and I can reposition it so a little bit more of it is in the photo. Then I have a little visual of what it looks like and I'm gonna type in the recipe title and you can edit all of this. So buffalo, chicken, quinoa, salad. And then let's see, when I find the recipe here, prep time is five minutes, cook time is 20. So prep time is five minutes, cook time is 20 minutes. And let's see, there are two servings it says. So I'm gonna change that to a two. When I copied and pasted the recipe directions over, there were a few extra things there. And then I need to clean all of this up. Sometimes links and things are weird. So I gotta clean up the stuff there. And if there's a link, I can remove the links if I don't want those to show up and make it look just a little bit better. So I would just change the three quarters pound boneless skinless chicken breast cut into bite sized pieces it to something a lot easier. So three quarters of a pound chicken breast cut into bite-sized pieces is enough for me. And just really try and simplify things as much as I can. Like I didn't put the blue cheese crumbles as garnish when I made this, so I got rid of it. And 
Another thing I did is I tossed with the blue cheese and all of the green onions. So I'm gonna say add the green onions, toss again and serve warm. Avocado. You know, I'm gonna go through the whole recipe and do that. So I will clean all of that up. And then once I finish that, I can toss it in the garbage and put it in my binder. So I think I am going to spend a little time getting these transferred over and we will check back in a minute. Okay, so I've printed a lot. I still have more printing if you can hear any printing in the background, but I have a lot of these divider pages printing. I have some of the recipes that I just input into the computer printing as well. And I thought I'd get to assembling the binders. All you'll need is a basic binder, some sheet protectors, and I bought these tabs to help stick out and label where the sections are. I'm going to use these with my label maker. So I'm gonna get going on that. I do have different size binders. So for ones that I don't have as many recipes, I have a one inch binder and then I have, I believe two inch binders for main dishes and desserts for breakfast and sides and like appetizers and things like that. That's what I opted to have as my other binders. Those ones I felt like I didn't need as much because I don't have that many breakfast recipes. So I am just going to go through here. I have my egg dishes, my rolls, my muffins, waffles, pancakes. Let's see, some of them I already had printed out. And I might put these in an order, like that makes sense to me. I don't really know. There is an order that makes sense to me or maybe I want to do alphabetical order or something, but I'm just slipping each of these sheets into their sheet protectors. Miscellaneous, I'm always gonna put, I was gonna say at the end, but not quite at the end because I am going to solve for the issue that I had before, which was I didn't know what recipes I loved, I didn't know what recipes I wanted to try, and I think I'm gonna try and keep those separated. So I am going to make one category at the end of each binder that is recipes to try. So I have a cover page that will be recipes to try at the end, and I'm gonna take everything from the old binders and put those at the end. And I'm gonna try and get that pile down to be something that's realistic. As I'm putting them into the to try pile, I am going to be taking a critical look at each recipe. Number one, I'm gonna be looking at, is it a dish in general? The idea of it that my family would enjoy. Is it something that I have the proper tools to make the dish? Like if it says to use an air fryer, and I don't have an air fryer and I don't have plans to get an air fryer, tossing that recipe. Is it something that I have access to the ingredients? Sometimes there's just really complicated ingredients that you can't find or don't wanna make the effort to find or purchase if you're just gonna use for one special recipe. So those types of things will not even make it into the two try pile, even if they maybe sounded appealing in the first place. And if you've followed me on Instagram, you know that the way I kind of meal plan is I don't have set days that I'm gonna cook like this specific, I don't know, salad for dinner, or I don't have like this chicken recipes on Tuesday. I don't do that. I just have a list of the maybe five or so recipes I wanna make that week. Depending on what groceries I get, what nights I end up being busy that week, I kind of shuffle it around. And even like what groceries I get, meaning which groceries are the freshest. So I might have a plan to have a certain dish at the end of the meal because I think those are the groceries that will last to the end of the week. But if I get something that has an expiration date that's a little bit quicker, then I might wanna have that at the beginning of the week. You get the point. I shuffle things around, but I love looking through all my recipe binders and coming up with a plan and then writing it out on a meal board for my whole family to see. And also, so I remember, I used to, and I don't think I have in this binder anymore, maybe some of my old ones I still do, but I used to put little flags on the recipes that I was gonna cook that week so I could quickly find them as well. So that's a great tip if you are gonna try and find your recipes quickly and you have a lot of binders. Even if you do write it out, you know, you know, if you are gonna make, let's say, uh, grilled cheese and tomato soup, you would know 
that maybe your grilled cheese and tomato soup are going to be in your main dishes binder and you'll have a section for soup and you'll have a section for sandwiches and you know where to find them but if you have a ton of recipes those little flags might help even if you don't probably they would still help so i am going to get these little dividers going and again we will check back in a minute So I've made a ton of progress. I think you get the point of what I'm doing here. Again, if you are interested in the templates, make sure to check the description box. You can head to that link. Let me know if you have any questions, other questions about recipe binders or meal planning in general that you'd like me to dive into. I could do like a meal plan with me and cook with me video. I've done those before, but using my new recipe binders and answering some additional questions you might have. Um, I think this might be something that either you could sit down and just like have an afternoon and get a lot done or you could kind of chip away at it as you are making recipes and liking them and creating your new recipe binders. I like the idea of starting fresh if you can. I'm already noticing like I just don't love the way that it looks having all of this bulk at the back even though I'm going to label it as to try. It's just way too much and very overwhelming when I'm gonna go through and pick recipes. So I'm gonna try and cut this down and really focus on those recipes that I've made and love and hopefully enjoy my brand new recipe binders. And however you make yours, I hope you enjoy them as well. And until next time, I will see you all later.